G'day everyone, welcome back to video 2 in the basic training series in Onshape. Today we are going to draw a pencil caddy. So create document. I'm going to call this one pencil caddy and click OK. I've already pressed F11 because I like the full screen and I'm just going to wait for everything to load. Alright, straight down to business. Top view. But this time, I'm going to remember that the bottom of the screen is the front. Alright, sketch on the top plane. Press P to get rid of all the other planes. And then go up to the rectangle and put a center point rectangle up. You can draw it any any shape here and the y-axis is 70 and the x-axis and I'm going by the y and the x up here in the view cube is 87 fantastic Okay, did you notice that when I drew the lines they were blue but now they're black? We're going to talk about that right now. So the next thing we're going to do is go up to the menu and get line. So click line, it should be shaded in. And we're going to go from one side to the other side all the way over. If you have a look at my mouse, you'll notice it's a plus sign. And if you look to the right of my mouse, you'll notice there's a right angle, um, which is a perpendicular constraint. And there's also the coincident constraint. So if I go up here, I'll just get rid of the line so it doesn't confuse. Coincident is this one here. It means touching the line. Um, and where's this one? Perpendicular is obviously at 90 degrees to whatever the line is. So on shape, when I draw a line like this, it already knows if I draw it like this, that that's what I want. If I don't want that, I just hold shift and you'll notice that none of the snapping happens. So it doesn't automatically go straight. Like here, it's going straight and then it's going on the line. If I hold shift, it doesn't do any of that. So I don't want to hold shift for this one. I want it to be straight and I want it to hit that line. So it's saving me time. Thanks on shape. All right, hit escape. You'll notice that this line's blue too. The reason why is because it isn't fully constrained. So we are going to go to our dimension. We're going to click the blue line and the black line at the bottom. And then we're going to make it three. And then hit escape to get off the dimension. Okay, a big time saver is a command called the mirror command, and that's what we're going to do here. We want this line the same up the top. So we could draw it again, um, but actually the better way is to use mirror. So I'm going to click this mirror. I'm going to select a mirror line. So I'm going to press P again to bring back all my planes. The mirror line, so where is the, the center of the mirror? We're going to make it this plane here, which is the front plane. You can see that it's popped up over here. It goes uh, really, it's a chartreuse, I think, this color. Um, and then the next one is select entities to be mirrored. So what do you actually want to mirror? We want to mirror this line here, and you'll see that it pops up at the top there. Once we've done that, we're going to hit escape. Remember, we're not going to click the tick because that finishes the drawing and we don't want to do that yet. All right, it's a little bit cluttered on my page, so I'm going to hit P and get rid of all these. I'm going to leave the origin there. You can turn it off, um, although it kind of still does stay there. I, I guess it's only because the, the rectangle's there, but I'll just leave it on there anyway. All right, I'm just going to move this out because it's a bit in the way. And now we're going to draw another line. 
So from the two inside lines, we're just going to go straight down to says should say 64. Click that line, and press escape. Instead of going up here and pressing dimension, we can just press D. There's a little shortcut key. And if you get to know the shortcuts, it'll save you a lot of time. So press D outside to our new blue line. And this is going to be 12. All right, fantastic. It's looking pretty good so far. Just for practice sake, we might do the mirror again. Um, we're not going to use this other line, but we are and we aren't. I'll, you'll see why in a second. And click mirror, select the mirror line. I know that this line here is my right plane, so I'm just going to click it up here and you'll see that it goes chartreuse. And then I'm going to click this orange because, oh sorry, I'm going to click this line here because this is what I'm going to mirror and then it's going to pop over the other side and I'm going to hit escape. Once you're looking at this, you can click the tick. So all we've done now on the right hand side here is the feature tree. You can see all the things that we will do, but right now all we've done is a sketch and there's no actual parts yet. If you hold the right mouse, right mouse button down, you can sort of see that it's just 2D. It's not actually anything 3D. That's what we're going to do at the moment. So the next thing to do is extrude. We're going to come over here and press the extrude. New, uh, blind, yes, it's a three mil extrude. Um, and what we're going to extrude is all of this bit here. So we could um, press all of them individually, or we can go up here, press sketch, and then just fill in the middle. Okay, so if I press front, I actually want this to be underneath the origin point. So I'm just going to hit this opposite direction and success. All right, you can see we've got our part. We're going to have more than one part. So I'm going to right click this, rename, and go base. All right, on shapes automatically gotten rid of our sketch. Once you extrude something, it usually thinks that it doesn't need the sketch anymore, but you can turn it on by clicking the eye. The next thing we're going to do is the back. So I don't want to get confused again. So I'm going to click front. I'm going to click this little bit around the outside, which takes me to the opposite direction. And then I'm going to scroll up a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing. Extrude this back section here. The depth, the size, I've got the drawing on another screen. It's 150. It's just a blind extrude. The only thing you need to make sure is it's, it's a new part, not an add. So we want this as a different part. We're going to make this out of wood. So all the parts are actually going to be different to each other. And click tick. Fantastic. All right. If you ever get lost up here, click isometric. All right. Our next thing that we're going to do is another extrude. We're going to do a new part and we're going to do this left hand side here. There's a few ways you can extrude. You can just drag it up manually and it'll tell you the size. Um, blind is when it doesn't really worry about anything else on the page, but we actually want to go up to the same face that we just did. So we're going to select up to face and click this little section here and you'll see it shoot up. Um, we're not going to worry about any of this other stuff. New, solid, up to face, click the tick. Fantastic. All right, this is something that we haven't done before. We're actually going to draw a sketch on something that we've extruded. So we're going to click sketch. We're going to come over here to the outside of this plane and click here. And I'm going to click left so I get everything. One of the things that you might do in CAD that I generally do a lot is I'll draw what we call construction lines. So a construction line is a line that doesn't actually show up in the drawings. It's just a line to help you draw other lines. So what I'm going to do here is go to line, click on construction, go trace along here until I get the, the square. This means the middle. And if you see that little symbol next to my mouse, that is midpoint. So I can just select it automatically by going down here. You'll see that the line is actually dotted and dashed instead of solid. That's telling me it's a construction line. And then I'm going to click down here to the middle. Um, the origin will be there if you've clicked 
the left because it's looking straight on but if you're looking from an angle the origin wouldn't be there but the square will be so it should say 150 fantastic I'm gonna click left again click escape all right now I'm gonna draw another real line so not a construction line I'm gonna go from the top here and I'm just gonna go down to the line and you'll see I've got the coincident um, constraint there so click that press escape all right I'm finished with this sketch actually no I'm not oh damn what am I gonna do right click edit so I can come back in here what I want to do is actually dimension this so I'm gonna click dimension but we want to dimension the angle so I'm gonna dimension this blue line and the top line here and you'll see that it wants to give me an angle my angle is 45 so now that I've edited that the way that I like it, I'm going to click the tick. Lastly, I'm going to extrude. I'm going to extrude this little piece here. Now I'm actually going to take this away. So this kind of gives it, um, so you can see your pencils in the pencil caddy. So I'm going to hit remove. So you can see that it's gotten rid of. It's generally not good practice just to sort of blind remove everything. Um, so what we're going to do is go up here and just go up to face and click the back and you'll see that it wants to get rid of it and we can get rid of it. Alright, our next move is really to rename these. So if I click on part two, you'll see the back is highlighted. So I'm going to rename this to back and this bit here, whoops, if you click into space, it'll unselect. So that's all I did there. If I click this bit here, I want to know that it's part three and I can see that it's the left bit. So I'm going to rename this to left. And that's it, um, isometric. All right. The next thing that we want to do is actually mirror this whole part. So you can mirror in a sketch or you can mirror all the parts. I'm going to click mirror. You see it's going to come up here, mirror. Part mirror, yes. You could mirror a face or a feature, but we're going to do the whole part. Entities to mirror. So follow this highlighted section. I want the left piece, please. Mirror plane. And we need to find our mirror plane. Um, if I click front, it's probably going to be easier to see. That right is in the center, so I want a mirror there. And you notice when I click that, I get this other piece here. It's a good practice to use mirror. Um, because what happens is you draw one and um, well let, let's just go in and see so let me go in and edit this sketch let's say I got my dimension wrong um, instead of that I actually want 70 and I click the button and then I click OK what you'll notice is they both um, get adjusted I don't have to adjust just one at a time I do them all and it's a safe way of making sure that they're all the same I'm going to make this back again to 45 because that's what I want and then I'm going to click tick all right I'm going to get rid of that oh no I need the original sketch so if you've hidden the sketch you need to show it again um, there's probably a few ways to do this the best way I found this next bit to make the front piece and we probably should rename this to to right um, to take the front piece front piece I want to first of all learn the measurement so if I just click here I'll see down the bottom that it says length 118 um, I want this front piece to be 118 to come up to here so it's a bit of a clunky way but this is how we're going to do it extrude new click on this piece here um, blind 118 and click OK. The reason why it's a bit clunky is because if I were to change this angle again this front piece wouldn't move with it. I'd have to change that later again so it's more work. I'm sure there is a way to make it um, but maybe you can tell me what it is when you figure it out. <laughs> Alright I'm gonna get rid of the sketch and that's basically my um, pencil caddy. So once you're done make sure you share it with me up here click share and can view, put my name in and click share. All right, I'll see you next time.